Hello everyone and welcome back to the Card Combo Show and it's been a while hasn't it so I apologise for that as you can probably tell from my backdrop I've been renovating so it's been uh, very much up in the air but I am back at home now with my brand new office and brand new desk and brand new set I'm going to talk fantastic and great anyway this week we are going to be looking at an episode of Monsters and there's some fun ones anyway this week we're going to be looking at Electric Jellyfish, Librarian, Varina, Tonberry, and finally Spicy Acillion. That's quite a mouthful. All right, let's get the show on the road, shall we? So, first and foremost, we've got Spicy Acillion. He is a 1 CP win monster. Dull, choose one forward. It can only be blocked by a forward of cost equal or inferior to its own this turn. So, similar to the Shamhazai summon. But, you know, it's a 1 CP monster you can play onto the field and you keep on reusing it. And that's one of the reasons I think I prefer this over Shem Hazai. So, running this alongside the Opus 14 Naja Salahim, I think this is pretty good actually. Because, obviously, Naja Salahim has a good effect when it hits your opponent. But also, Naja Salahim cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities. So now, Naja Salahim can only be blocked by a forward of 2 or 1. And it cannot be targeted. So that means your opponent's going to struggle to stop it from hitting them. And, you know, you combo this with something like... I don't know, is it Ridia, the backup Ridia that has um, counters, or Chocolate as well. There's a lot of good cards that you can combo with Narja Salahim. Leo as well, these are a really good one. But yeah, ultimately, these two are a match made in heaven. Right, next, we've got Wall. So when Wall deals damage to your opponent, choose one Category Mobius character in your break zone. Add it to your hand. So if you have a very Mobius focused deck, then be able to use Wall repeatedly to hit your opponent and then get things back to hand. Pretty good. Obviously, again, he is only a 2CP, so it means he can be blocked by 2CPs or 1CPs, but still, it's a good way to get under your opponent's defences. Spiritus. So, obviously, alongside Spicy Sin, Spiritus would only be able to be uh, blocked by a 1CP, but once you play Spiritus onto the field, he's kind of like a monster in himself as well, because obviously he can play another Dark Forward onto the field, the same applies to Materia, um, but once he's there, he just kind of has a passive effect with your um, Dark Forwards moving to the break zone, but he can't really do anything more than that, and he's pretty easy to get rid of as well, so making it so that he's also hard to block and can actually swing under your opponent's forwards as well is pretty decent, and it means that your opponents are going to want to get rid of him even more. Um, so, you know, he kind of becomes a lightning rod in that sense. You can also play him alongside uh, the Barts, which plays a 1CP on forward onto the field as well, alongside Spicy Cillian, because that would mean that he would come onto the field, play another forward onto the field as well, but then the Spiritus would gain haste, and then he swings under your opponent's forwards. Ochu, similar sort of thing. Obviously, it is only a 1CP forward when it does become a forward, so it's harder for your opponent to block, but also it's a 7k 1CP forward. So it's got a lot of power considering how small its CP cost is, not to mention the fact that it also does reactivate loads of backups, and, you know, it's another monster, so it works nicely with in a monster deck. Zidane, he obviously has his own little kind of ability to swing under anyway when you have six cards but just making it so that he can just keep on swinging under regardless and keep on getting you loads of cards to hand it's a pretty good combo archangel mr now this is an interesting one because archangel mr cannot be blocked by a forward of power 7000 or more but with spicy sin it can only be blocked with a uh, forward of the same cp cost or less as well so actually let's say your opponent has a 2 cp forward on the field and it's probably multi-color so it's got uh, 7000 power however Archangel cannot be blocked by a forward of 7,000 power or more. So now your opponent has to have something small in both power and cost to be able to block Archangel MR. And then if Archangel is keep on doing yeah, if Archangel does keep on doing damage to your opponent, then they try to get rid of it. You can pay to win to make it so it cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities as well, which is pretty good to be honest. Palum. <laughs> I mean, I try to throw in this card whenever I can, but again, he's only one CP forward, so pretty hard to block with Spicy Ceiling. But also, when he does deal damage to your opponent, you get to then search yourself another Palum, bring that onto the field, and put this one into the break zone. So you can deal damage to your opponent and then bring another Palum on, which will have an entry effect, so maybe doing damage to your opponent's forwards or drawing a card, something like that. Sarah and Snow. Snow, again, able to swing under, but let's say your opponent does have a forward that they can block Snow with. You can use Snow's ability when he attacks to actually dull something out of the way. And with Sarah on the field, it also means that he cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities. So that means your opponent's limited in the ways that they can get rid of Snow as well. 
Then you have a similar sort of thing with Darge and Sars. So Sars obviously is a 2 CP rather than 1, so he has more forwards that can block him. However, when he attacks, he does deal damage, which is fine. But alongside Darge, it means that he cannot be chosen by opponent summons abilities. So similar sort of thing to Naja Salahim, but Sars can get a little bit bigger. Well, I say bigger, he can deal damage to the forwards that would block him as well. Tonberry. So, he's a 1 CP water monster. When a character your opponent controls searches for one or more cards, put Tonberry into the break zone. If you do so, break that character. So, he's pretty strong if you think about it because, you know, anything that searches immediately broken. So, if it's a forward, that's kind of sucky, but also it breaks a backup as well. So, you know, it's, I think it's a pretty good card, to be honest. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't stop your opponent from searching the card, so they still get to get that card to hand, which if they need to, then they will, but ultimately, it is a massive deterrent and makes your opponent not want to search things so Tama <laughs> this is a weird combo but basically let's say your opponent plays a backup onto the field that would search something before your opponent gets a chance to search you can use Tama to play Tomberry onto the field now Tomberry's text is when a character opponent controls searches for one or more cards put Tomberry into the break zone and break that character so what this means actually is that when the forward comes onto the field, that ability stacks to search, but they haven't searched yet. So if you can bring Tomberry onto the field before your opponent searches, and then Tomberry's there when your opponent tries to search, if they do actually search, that character then breaks because they haven't searched up to that point. The ability is stacked, but they haven't searched. Now, obviously your opponent can fail the search, which means that, you know, you've broken Tomberry and bought on Tomberry, but you've stopped your opponent from potentially getting that one card and you're screwing with their efficiency. But ultimately, you know, if they do end up searching, getting that card to hand, you still get to break whatever character that entered the field. Be careful because, you know, if it's a backup and they're searching another backup, you might just be giving them the space they need to be able to play that backup as well. So you need to be careful about what it is you're breaking and actually consider the uh, outcome of your actions. But still, quite funny because your opponent definitely wouldn't consider this sort of play. Remedy. So when your opponent searches for one more cards, your opponent discards one card from their hand. And if they do discard from your summons or abilities, you also get to search a card named Sid Randall. So basically, Tom Berry and Remedy on the field would mean that your opponent, if they try to search, <laughs> that character breaks, and then they also have to discard a card as well, and you get a card to hand if they do discard. That's a lot to take on board just to be able to search something, so again, these two can really, really screw the opponent's efficiency. Sid Randall! Um, so Tom Berry, I mean, most of the time when your opponent's searching something, it's with a backup. Backups tend to be the bigger searches. There's like a couple of summons, and there are a fair few forwards. But ultimately, having Tomberry there means that basically your opponent's searches on the backup lineup probably won't be happening. Sid Randall obviously stops your opponent's forwards entry abilities from triggers. So having these two on the field basically means that if your opponent plays either a forward or a backup, they really have to consider what's actually going to happen. Garland! So I mentioned before that Tomberry, if he's on the field, your opponent plays such a backup, that will break. If you're Garland on the field, you get to draw a card as well. Just a funny little combo. Aerith, if you control a 7, oh, that doesn't matter. Uh, the forwards you control cannot be chosen by your opponent's backup abilities. So again, this is more about protecting yourself. So having Tomberry there means that your opponent won't really want to search. Having Aerith there means that if they have any offensive abilities from their backups, they can't target either. So now your opponent's limited on what their backups can actually even do. So they might have like fire backups and want to deal damage. That can't happen because of Aerith. And then they want to play more consistency backups. Tomberry breaks them. Scale Toad. So <laughs> Tomberry obviously breaks the searcher backup or forward or whatever. But then Scale Toad, if they do decide to search, because if Tomberry's breaking it, they have successfully searched, at which point Scale Toad will be there and your opponent will have to discard down if they have two cards or more in their hand anyway. Obviously, when your opponent, if they see Scale Toad and Tomberry on the field, they search, they actually go for that search. They probably have a play in hand. But either way, this is a horrible thing to face off because your opponent really has to think. How am I going to get around these two cards? Mariner! So a 2 CP 8k fire monster. When a forward you control deals damage to your opponent, if Varana is not a forward, Varana also becomes a forward of 8k power and brave. So he's pretty good considering he's only, you know, 2 CP. Titan, Lord of Crags. So you could have Varana sat there with a couple of forwards, and your opponent has a few forwards as well. When Titan, Lord of the Crags, enters the field, break all the forwards of a power less than Titan, Lord of Crags. When five or more forwards put into the field in the break zone by this effect, Titan, Lord of the Crags deals your opponent one point of damage. So you could play Titans onto the field, 
break five boards, including some of your own, at which point you deal him a point, your opponent a point of damage, and then Varana would then become a forward. If Varana has been on the field for more than one turn, they can then attack. Hopefully this means that playing Titan has actually cleared your opponent's board, which would be pretty cool, and then you'd have Varana there ready to swing through as well. Jekt, I loved this little combo back in the day. I mean, they came out in the same set, so it was obviously intended, given the fact they're also both 10 forwards as well, but still, it's fun. Be able to deal yourself quite a bit of damage, and then all of a sudden you play Jekt for only one CP, and then, you know, deal your opponent uh, some damage as well, at which point Varana becomes a forward. You can then start attacking with Varana. You know, Varana's a generic card, so you can have three of them on the field as well. So you play Jekt for one CP, you then gain three other forwards. That's four forwards you've gained. <laughs> for only paying one CP, which is quite hilarious. I mean, obviously you paid the CP for Farina previously, but in one turn, they all become forwards. Um, so yeah, and obviously if you can attack with Varina and they're brave as well, it means that you've still got a good defensive lineup as well. Spicy Asilian! Again, just a two CP forward, but one with brave as well, and that's a good thing, because if you can have a little forward that keeps on swinging under your opponents, but is also really good at, you know, blocking your opponent's forwards as well, because... He's a decent size for what he is. He's only 2 CP, but he's brave, and he is um, AK as well. Kumari. So the category 10 characters other than Kumari control cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons. So having Kumari on the field in like a 10 theme deck, so maybe we've got Jekt again as well, maybe Auron. But having Kumari there to make it so that Varano actually can't be targeted by your opponent's summons as well, pretty decent. Yuzuki. So if a fire forward you control is dealt damage by your opponent's abilities, the damage becomes zero instead. Um, I mean, it's only abilities, which kind of sucks, but it is just another way of getting around Varuna staying around a bit longer. But if you combine Yuzuki with Kimari, it means that your um, Varuna can be targeted by summons, and if it's dealt damage by abilities, that becomes zero as well. So it's a lot more evasion for just this little forward that will keep on swinging because he's got Brave, but he's also there as a defensive um, wall, which means that your opponent really has to start considering how are they going to get around all your things. Not to mention Yuzuki also protects um, Kamari on the field as well, which is just fun. Librarian. So, 5 CP Earth Monster. When Librarian enters the field, remove the top four cards of your deck from the game. At the end of your turn, add one card removed from the previous effect to your hand. Then, if there are no more cards removed by the previous effect, put Librarian into the break zone. So, First, you need to remember that when you remove things from the game, they are public knowledge. So, unfortunately, your opponent will see those four cards as well. However, you get to pick the card you add to hand. So, say you reveal four cards and there's three trash and only one good one. Actually, you can look at that one good one and be like, that's the one I need right now. Um, but still, being able to pay five CP and then over basically every turn, gain another card to hand at the end of your turn is pretty good. You need to make sure, though, that you don't have five cards in hand when the librarian triggers, because if that puts you to six cards, you have to discard down, at which point it was kind of worthless doing this. And again, if librarian is also broken with those cards still removed, it means those cards are now gone forever and you can't get them back. So, Lakshmi, Lady of Bliss. <laughs> Librarian gets your card to hand at the end of your turn. So does Lakshmi. And obviously, Lakshmi has a decent ability. If you have five or more cards in hand, Lakshmi, Lady of Bliss gains. Uh, Lakshmi is dealt damage, reduced the damage by 2,000 instead. So that's pretty good as well. And having Librarian and Lakshmi give you two cards to hand at the end of your turn is pretty decent. So it means you can only have three cards in hand when you finish your turn. You get two back. Pretty good. Guts go. Similar sort of thing, getting cards but removed from game. So when Guts go attacks or enters the field, you remove a card from game. And then when he leaves the field, yep, uh, you get all those cards to hand as well. So it means that potentially Guts go could attack, get blocked, die. You get a couple of cards to hand. You pass your turn. Like Roy gives you a card to hand as well. Obviously, you need to be conscious of how many cards you're going to be getting to cut, uh, into your hand at the end of the turn. Because again, if you are over six, you have to down. Uh, you have to discard. Sorry. Minerva. So, at the beginning of your main phase one, select one of the three following actions. The one I'm interested in, draw one card. So at the beginning of your turn, you get to draw an additional card, so you get three, and then at the end of your turn, you also get to card, draw a card off of Librarian as well. So, you know, that's four cards drawn in one turn, but three at the beginning as well means you can set up and you can have those cards in hand and look at the cards removed by Librarian at the beginning and be like, well, I'm going to use that card in my opponent's turn, so I need to leave these cards in hand, so you can actually start to plan what you're going to do in your opponent's turn as well. Mirror. So obviously Mirror can reduce the cost of Librarian, which is decent enough, but also when Librarian puts itself into the break zone when you have run out of cards, Mirror can then search another one of itself and get that to hand, you know, play onto the field, and again, keep on recycling. 
Cloud of Darkness. Um, so Cloud of Darkness, when it attacks, you can Dull and Freeze to active forwards on your opponents, but also on your field as well. But the more monsters you have, you can just keep dulling and freezing those basically. So you're basically dulling out and freezing your opponent's field whilst you're only dulling out and freezing your monsters which aren't going to be doing anything anyway so it's just a nice little combo to be able to keep on getting cards to hand whilst you're also um completely shutting down your opponent's field and reducing their ability to actually be able to do anything electric jellyfish a two cp electric <laughs> lightning monster uh, when electric jellyfish enters the field choose one forward it gains haste and put electric jellyfish into the break zone choose one forward done it so this little guy packs a punch um really 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 good monster and the fact that it's only two cp is really good as well so two effects and it's pretty decent so, something along the lines of Orianja, Orianja even, sorry. Um, you play Orianja onto the field, you can then bring an Electric Jellyfish, at which point you can then bounce one of your opponents forward. But Electric Jellyfish entering can also give Orianja haste as well. If then Orianja attacks and your opponent has a forward to block with, you can then use Electric Jellyfish to dull that forward out of the way as well. So basically, this is a great way to be able to get rid of two of your opponents forwards from blocking, whilst also dealing opponent damage out of nowhere. Ravana, Savior of the Nath. Now, this is a fantastic combo. So, you play Ravana onto the field, and then you play Electric Jellyfish. Yeah, I know, that's a lot of CP, but um, Ravana, obviously, you give him haste from Electric Jellyfish entering. You attack, and then on the stack of the attack, you put Electric Jellyfish into the break zone to dull one of your opponents forwards. That will trigger Ravana to reactivate, and then Ravana will be able to attack again, and your opponent's forwards can't block because, well, forward can't block because it dulled. But if you combine this with the likes of Sid Woff, it means that obviously you can play Electric Jellyfish to give Ravana haste, attack with Ravana, Electric Jellyfish into the break zone. That will then stand Ravana back up and dull one of your opponents forwards. You let the attack resolve. You then use Sid Woff into the break zone, which again, oh no, sorry, you have to do the second attack with Ravana first. Then you put Sid Woff into the break zone to stand Ravana back up. That will then bring Electric Jellyfish back onto the field. If you have another forward, give that one haste as well. And then when Ravana's attacked the third time, you put Electric Jellyfish back into the break zone to stand Ravana back up again. And then you attack a fourth time. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot to take on board and you know obviously if you're bringing electric jellyfish back onto the field and not giving something else haste feels like a bit of a waste but if you are ultimately dealing four points of damage to your opponent probably worth it gentiana so she uh the dull forwards your opponent controls lose their abilities and dull choose one forward dull it so just giving or using electric jellyfish to give gentiana haste so then she can dull something and then you can also use electric jellyfish to dull something else it means that you can ultimately dull a couple of problematic forwards, get rid of their abilities, and then do whatever you needed to do. It is a fairly heavy investment because ultimately, you know, that's probably a case of you playing Gentiana and Electric Jellyfish onto the field at the same time. But sometimes the needs must, and Gentiana is a very powerful card because it's a passive. It means that all the forwards that are dull end up losing their abilities, so you might have something that is really hard to deal with. Using Gentiana and Electric Jellyfish means that you can get rid of a couple of those forwards and just start swinging through. Realm. So when Realm enters the field, you may search up uh, up to one monster of cost one and one monster of cost two and play them onto the field. So Electric Jellyfish obviously would be the two CP one, and then something like Propagator could be the uh, other one. Now when Propagator enters the field, choose a four, it loses two thousand power to the turn. That's all right. I don't really care so much about that. But it damage three Propagator also becomes a four with seven thousand power. Now Electric Jellyfish would enter at the same point as Propagator. So actually Electric Jellyfish can enter. See Propagator, give that haste, at which point Propagator can then attack and you put Electric Jellyfish into the break zone and dull one of your opponent's forwards as well. Obviously, you could give Realm haste if you really wanted, but she isn't exactly a huge forward, so you know, it might not be worth it. Or you could do something like Yeoman. So you might have a forward that you want to attack with. So maybe you've played another forward and then Realm. Realm brings in these two. You can then give that forward haste and then put Yeoman into the break zone to also give it um, first strike as well. Not to mention that Yeoman actually gets you a card to hand as well. So you start recouping some of the costs as well. There are some other lightning monsters, one CP1 monsters that you could use alongside this. But these are just two of the that I wanted to go with because they don't get played that much. Camelot. So when Camelot enters the field or attacks, choose one dull forward your opponent controls, deal it 2,000 damage for each ice backup you control. Now obviously with Electric Jellyfish being lightning, it means that you won't probably have too many ice backups there, unless you're running very minimal amount of lightning, or you have ways of wrangling ice into your deck through the leanings of something like, I don't know, Sid uh, Woff. Either way, Electric Jellyfish can enter, give Camelot haste, and then you can use Electric Jellyfish to dull the forward, Camelot attacks, deals damage to that dull forward. 
Cool. There we go. All done and dusted. Um, again, sorry for the wait, guys. I mean, it, I know it's been a while, but we're back in the house now and I can actually start pumping out videos again. And I know literally just before I started doing the renovations, I laid out this elaborate plan of all these videos I'm going to do over the period of a month and a schedule and everything. But now I can actually do that. So yay. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video and be lucky.